the s p 500 the nasdaq 100 now this is the nasdaq specifically and this is your biggest drop that you've had on the nasdaq and over two years going back to december 2022 and actually at the end of the day it might have even broken that record when we get to it as well um because again this drop has been brutal but we talked a lot about this what did we say if we zoom out really quickly we noticed and we talked about when you break below 19.7 that's when you want to go short because it's an easy easy drop if you bring in the liquidity tool you can see liquidity liquidity there's none there so we knew that drop was going to come very quick now this is the surprising part you find your next level of support and you just break through that so as of right now i'm going to tell you you don't even have to go to you don't have to wait to the end of the video you're most likely going down to your next liquidity level, which is right around here at 19,000. I don't want to say it's guaranteed, but it's highly, highly likely. Okay. That's most likely where you're headed to. We'll go into more detail of what's after that level as well, but that's, I'm going to tell you right now, going into tomorrow, I'm expecting at least more downside into 19K. Now we go into SPY, S&P, what's happening here. You broke below and we came into our level. This is what we talked about. We said, we're, if we break below 550, we're looking for a push down to 554. But again, you come into support and you break right through it. Another very big caution sign, in my opinion. I'd be targeting 536 next, and it is also a gap fill. So two areas I'm looking for right now. Um, again, you have a little bit of support there as well in your 539, 540. But what I'd be looking at specifically right now, okay? So those are your indexes, what you're looking at there. Now we can go into S&P futures, ES if you need to. But again, you're coming closer into uh, 5450. And then your next level is going to be closer down here to basically 5,400 flat. Okay, so really easy to identify what's happening there as well. One of the biggest warning signs here was the Dow. Um, and something we've been talking about. It's how you're trending at 40,700, 40, which was your previous all-time high back here in March, 20, uh, March 21st. So you can actually see that you flagged here, came back down. Pretty textbook when you ask me when we were in regards to a flag of breaking down. Now... I expected buyers to try to hold you up, but then we talked about what would happen if earnings came out bad, and earnings did come out bad. So, very important to understand that we had bad earnings, or not necessarily terrible earnings from Google and Tesla. Tesla was earnings weren't good. They, like I've always say, Tesla usually doesn't report very bullish earnings statistically speaking. Google, what hurt them was the hit to YouTube ad uh, ad revenue, and that hurt names like Meta and other competitors there. Um, so again, when we look at what happened with Google, and Google actually tried to hold up for the better part of the day and ended up pulling back. You, you didn't really break lows from this morning, but you look at something like Meta, which dropped all day long, right? So it's important to understand where we're at and what was moving us and what was the really stronger movers to the downside. So very important to understand that as well. So that's the biggest points right now. We go into something like the dollar and what's happening with the DXY. You're still trending at your 200 SMA. Not a big worry yet on the dollar if you're getting a risk um, off indicator just there. You could argue you're making inverted head and shoulders. I, I don't really love that, but I know some of you are going to comment to that. So I'm just going to tell you right now that is a possibility. I don't care about that, um, especially on the dollar, but worth mentioning. Um, the 30-year yield as well, one of the bigger indicators. This is more worrisome, bouncing above the 200, pushing back into 4.6 uh, as well. That is an issue, okay? But the bigger issue here of what's really gonna dictate this movement is when we go into what's happening specifically and something like the news as well here on the calendar. Because again, this week is where things really start to heat up. If when we go to the end of the week, specifically on Friday, again, I'm telling you right now, Friday is your biggest day of the week here because what comes out then, it's gonna be PCE data. And that is gonna be the most important piece of news here. Um, just to let you know, um, it's gonna lead everything else I'm um, just give you the hint there. So 7:30 a.m. my hour before market open. You have core PCE, and that is the biggest price uh, gauge that we're looking at, specifically the Fed when it comes to inflation. That's really your only big data on the week. You do have some uh, GDP numbers, I think, believe coming out tomorrow, but PCE will top all of that, in my personal opinion. So again, PCE is very big. We're getting into some options here as well, but that's what I'm looking at right now. Um, broad market. So really quickly attacking that so you understand. You also do have oil continuing back on the downtrend, pushing back down. This is interesting in how we're moving. You would like to see if you're gonna bounce here on oil, um, especially if you're bearish on the market. So you'd love to see a bounce here on oil, but again, you're coming back into your apex. This is interesting and will definitely benefit inflation data going into September. That's when you can expect this to benefit inflation um, in a positive sense as well. So something I'd be looking at there. 
Um, Bitcoin pulling back as well with the market, not a big surprise there. Um, you're also still in your downtrend, as you can see. On Bitcoin, you have not broken your downtrend, clear as day there. So those are the biggest things that I'm watching broad market overall. You also have VIX popping back up almost into 20. And I do wanna highlight something here on VIX. Um, everyone's always hyping up VIX and you know VIX is a big problem and this and that. Well, VIX has trended the majority of the past year um, down below 14 to $12, okay? So understand that. When VIX gets into these higher levels like $19, $20, um, you don't spend too much time there. Um, so I wanna highlight something very quickly and some people might get mad about this, but it's just my opinion and how I view the market. When you start getting back into $19, $20, you're probably finding some sort of bottom on the overall drop that you're having. Now, I still believe this could have some more gas left in the tank based on how the NASDAQ is moving. Because I do want to highlight, this is your biggest drop percent-wise that you've had on the NASDAQ in the past two years. That's an issue, okay? Know that. That is a major, major issue. But you're also coming back down into that flat top back here at 19K. So there's ever an area that you want to bounce, it's right here at 19K locally. We also go back to something like the daily. You're still well above your previous all-time highs back from 2021. So again, yeah, overall trend still looks really bullish. Short term, very big red flag. Not going long on just about anything right now. Um, I do like leaps on specific companies, and I'll go into those here in a second. Um, but yeah, so those are the biggest things I'm looking at. Broad markets right now. Um, and again, next week we'll have some big earnings as well, but I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Let's continue to focus on what is in front of us. Okay. So as we jump into the market, let's go into Microsoft number one. So yesterday we had a great trade on Microsoft. And I also want to highlight guys, if you're not following me on Twitter, I recommend doing so. I post a lot of trades and stuff on here for free. Um, as you guys can see, um, I posted Microsoft for you guys yesterday. I posted the NASDAQ when it got below 197 for you to the downside. Um, we posted a Microsoft right here. So you can see the invert head and shoulders need to popping into our targets. So again, free stuff is all over on Twitter. The link is down below. Make sure you check it out. So again, Microsoft right now though, very big red flag in my opinion, as you're getting below these two levels, it was a little bit hard to draw this cause you're kind of had a flat top give or take, but you're back below 431 under 431. I could see sellers pushing you back down locally. Um, I would look more towards the target of around 421 locally that would be my target there if i'm looking at microsoft but in a perfect world what you're looking for is that break and retest so you get the break you get the retest of a 431 and then continuation to the downside you remount 431 stay away from it okay now what i will say though and i you're i'm gonna have a trouble today is going over specific option chains with you guys because of what's happening right now with the market obviously we're getting slapped broad market so if i look at microsoft and go for next week you're gonna pay a premium because of those earnings coming in so yeah, I can't give you too big of really like what I love, what I like, because that's the big issue there. So <clears throat> understand that, do what you will with the information. Um, I'd be going out of the money, especially since I have IV in my favor. So something like 440s potentially. Um, if I'm trading the upside, if I'm going to the downside, I'm trading something like 420s, at least 10, $15 out of the money because they're still going to move decent. Personal opinion, do what you got to do. Um, again, Meta, another big name here. Meta was very affected by um, Google's earnings, okay? And Meta is a big play here. And I think we need to be paying very close attention to Meta. So Meta, there's a few levels. The bottom of your gap right there, which again, you never fill this gap completely down to 406. That's really scary. Um, so what I'm looking for here on Meta is can you get back below 454, 453? If Meta can get below those levels, I do believe sellers can start stepping in very aggressively. I wanna make that very clear. Now going into tomorrow for a quick trade, what I'd be looking for is a break of local lows right here at 459. And then I'd be looking for a break retest and continuation to 453. And then waiting for that reaction there, maybe holding runners, whatever you wanna do. Now Meta, again, this is one of the more expensive things you have to trade. So again, I'm just going over the trades that are there. Don't attack me for the prices. Um, Meta, again, if I'm going for this week's, I traded some of these today. I post them in, in Discord as well in the option chat. So if you weren't paying attention, you weren't paying attention. But again, they still move good. Okay, I wanna highlight that. We look at something like the 450s, right? Even if you got into them at around one o'clock before another big drop, they're around 90 cents. These things pumped into $2.40. So almost a 3X on those contracts as well. Food for thought. Think about when, you know, just the trade opportunity that's out there, right? So again, you're still getting good movers and I still like it a lot. I do believe Medicus are breaking down and being very ugly because again, ad revenue from social media is a big part of Meta's game and what they're looking at there. Um, but it also could set up Meta to have a pretty good earnings call as well with a lot of doubt and not a lot of good expectations there. 
Google was interesting. I mentioned it earlier. It was trying to hold up, but you can never get back above 175. You need a mountain back above 175. So I want to highlight that. So to get bullish ever, you get a mountain back above this. You mount above it. It's an easy long at that point. I mean, honestly, above 175, you just go crazy on that thing. Now to the, the, the downside here now, this is where things get ugly. We bring this back. And as you can see, a lot of liquidity here, not a lot of we can do. Now, I would anticipate you try to pin around 172. Now, if you get below 172, your liquidity is going to ease up and you're probably going to push down to 169, a little bit lower. So again, Google, not one of my favorite names, but check them out. I also think the earnings were kind of bad for Google's as far as how the market interpreted it. I don't think that the, it, the earnings were actually that bad. I think the only area that was bad was Google or the ad revenue from YouTube, specifically my personal opinion. Do what you got to do with that information as well. Personal, personal opinion there. Okay. Um, broad market though. People asking me about Tesla. I know a lot of questions regarding Tesla. I never trade Tesla earnings, um, but I want to tell you something about Tesla. Very, very, very simple, ladies and gentlemen. Very. I don't know how, but I keep getting rid of. I keep getting rid of, rid of some of my indicators and it's kind of pissing me off guys. It's kind of pissing me off, right? Really quick. You guys want to know how to put the SMA in chart? You go to moving average simple, come over here, you know, just food for thought, uh, trade that line there and go to 200. Yeah, I know I can't go any slower. What can I say? Uh, there we go there. So your 200 SMA on the daily is right there as well. Okay. So the Tesla is operating below your 200 weekly and you're just going straight down. Um, very, 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 very weak, very weak. Okay. Um, so again, what I'm looking for on Tesla is a break below these local lows here and then a slow grind back down to the 200 SMA break retest and continuation 205, 206. You've already basically filled the gap. Gap fills at 213. So do what you gotta do there. But I think you're dropping back down to 206, at least 208, 208, 206. What I'd be looking for there. Once you get below 214, 215, that's what I'd be looking at. So again, top trade there. What I'd be watching closely now, a big trade I mentioned too on Twitter. So I mentioned this one on Twitter today. Um, Apple breaking below 222, back into 220. Um, this one started dropping, but you lost 220 here, and that's concerning. So I'm watching this like a hawk on Apple for longer term positions, okay? Apple does have earnings soon. I believe it's next week. So if Apple gets back above 220, I'm going long. Okay, I want to make that really clear. But I'm not buying below 220 here. I love it. I said I'd probably end up buying it, but I'm not buying it now. I have to wait for it to get back above that massive 220 level. A great, for instance, is like buying Amazon. Um, at like 198, right? I'm not gonna buy below at 198. Now down here, maybe, maybe there's potential, but up here, no sir, right? No sir, we're not buying below 200. We're not buying at resistance. That's not what smart people do. I like to pretend that I'm smart sometimes too, right? So that's what I'm looking at there. Um, I still like dated positions on Apple too, January, maybe even further dated. Okay, next one up is CrowdStrike. Now, I wanna make this really clear on CrowdStrike. Very, very, very clear. Okay, I also post this. In, I post this in Discord today. I kind of forgot that I posted this in Option Chat. But CrowdStrike, if you are looking at CrowdStrike in the short term, I believe you have downside. Okay, I I really do. There's downsides likely. There's a big potential chance you come down to 210, 205. I'm not gonna lie to you. 200 SMA is huge. Also, too, you bounced and you got rejected right here at one at 274. Terrible, 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 terrible. Okay. Bear flag, you're gonna break lows here. You're you're gonna drop. There's probably another twenty dollar drop coming quick. So the shorts, and the short term shorts on CrowdStrike are make a lot of sense. They're not that expensive. Do what you gotta do. Okay, long term, long term. I think CrowdStrike is gonna be one of the best stock buys of the year. I'm telling you right now. I think it is a risky call. I think it's an aggressive call. I think it's a big call, very big call. Some would say. Shout out to Donald Trump. Love that guy. No, I don't. No, I don't. Take that back. No, maybe I do. I don't know. Anyways, CrowdStrike. Right, gonna tell you right now, biggest opportunity of the year on this dip, stock wise, maybe even leaps, but I think stock is the way to go so you don't have to worry. The one thing I want you to interpret from what happened to CrowdStrike is this, is they are so large. No one expected CrowdStrike to have this big of an impact when they went down, no one, I, I didn't. I didn't think they were this big. That's what I'm taking from this. They're not, I don't think they're going to lose market share. I think they're great. I think they're in good hands. I think they're going to bounce back. Last I took an L, but today we're going to bounce back. So that's what we're looking at there. Now, also, two guys, I want to uh, point this out. You guys saw me going over options and things like that. Guys, if you guys are interested in the best broker in the game, my personal opinion, they're also having some really big um, new uh, promotions as well. Sorry, word was on my mind, but couldn't think it out loud. Um, they're doing, you get 20 stocks, 20 free stocks when you have a new deposit of up to like $1,000, just to let you know. Um, but again, go to their website. The link is down below. Check it out. 
all in depth. But again, these guys have been killing it when it comes to my overall account and what I've been doing trading wise. Again, fills, customer service, actual platform as well to trade on, fully customizable. Everything that you kind of need in a platform. Again, I've been using it nonstop. Hope you guys like the platform as well. The link is down below, so make sure you check it out. But again, really quick, uh, back into the market, guys. Okay. The point I'm making here too, and it's something that I'm, people are going to get mad at me today. People are going to be like, Tyler, you were bullish. You were this, you were that. And guys, I, I can admit, I can admit, I was very bullish broad market, okay? But I did say something last week. And you go rewatch the tape on Friday and rewatch the tape on Monday, okay? Or Tuesday, whenever the last day I made the video was. I said very clearly, you don't, you want to stay pretty liquid until earnings because you already have great inflation numbers. You have a rate cut coming, but you, haven't, you have earnings right in front of us. This is the first time we had earnings where the only thing that's holding us back. And guess what happened? Earnings haven't gone so well so far. But I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, after earnings, I think you still look really good. But I can't predict how Google's going to report their YouTube revenue or Amazon's going to report all their sales. I can give you an opinion, but I can't give you a fact, factual-based answer. I just can't. That's the reality situation. But I said very clearly, go watch the tape. Go go rewatch the video. I said, you want to be pretty liquid during this time. And I said, if you break below 19.7, you're going to drop instantly to 19.4. I've been saying it. So again, what you need to do is have an overall plan for yourself. Have a journal, have a trade plan, write it down, keep it in front of you and stay focused on that plan. And if your plan gets you know destroyed and the market deviates from that plan, then adjust. Understand what you did wrong, what happened differently, was it news-based, what what happened, where, where did you go wrong, and work on that, guys, because the only way you get better at this, the only way that you're really going to get better at trading and making money trading, I'm going to tell you right now, is consistently putting in that work, putting in that effort, and consistently trying to get better, and acknowledging that you're not going to be perfect all the time. Some days you're going to have perfect days. Some days I have perfect, amazing days, right? But some days I'm wrong. Some days I lose money, right? And But those are the days that I have to take a step back and understand what did I do wrong to put myself in that situation. That's all I got for you today, guys. Follow on Twitter. The link is down below. Our indicators are down below as well. So check them out. Have a good one, traders.